what is up guys uh, welcome back to the channel and to another roundup episode keeping you up to date on all the latest news and rumors and we certainly got a lot of those to discuss today as we head into the extreme rules pay-per-view which is this weekend today we're going to continue the coverage for that event and following up on some of the previous reports that we talked about on the previous roundup episode which if you guys haven't checked it out just yet make sure to do so now before we get into it guys quick reminder that i will be doing a wwe extreme rules watch party over in my twitch channel which by the way i'm live almost every single night either playing wwe games or fortnite so if you haven't dropped me a follow just yet make sure to do so especially before this sunday before we do the watch party it is usually a lot of fun doing those because of the interactions that i get to have with you guys nonetheless getting into this roundup episode which is episode 327 i want to follow up with something that we covered on the previous episode in which we discuss about wwe changing their pay-per-view schedule for later on this year reports is indicating that with this year's wwe super showdown and names like battleground fast lane and naming shows after matches on the car there's not exactly a ton of inspiration in some of the names that wwe is currently using for their pay-per-view one that we discussed yesterday was the tlc pay-per-view which was moved to december the latest according to brad shepard is that wwe is considering changing multiple of these names pay-per-view and are going to be bringing back some WCW classics. Two of the main names being speculated for replacement are Halloween Havoc and Starcade. Starcade which as you guys know came back last year but it was a house show. There is no word on when this will take place but there have already been changes to the WWE pay-per-view schedule such as the one we just discussed of TLC being moved. And to clarify on what I reported yesterday, TLC and Class of Champions are not necessarily switching schedules, but instead, WWE is going to be having Class of Champions at a different date. But that's as of right now, because with the rumor of them possibly changing their names to the pay-per-view, that pay-per-view could be one of those. The big standout name out of all of this is obviously Starcade, because that was like the WrestleMania of WCW. So it's only right that if WWE brings it back, they better hype it up just like if it was some type of wrestlemania moving on to some other news and we're talking the latest in regards to jeff hardy who as you guys know we reported before that he was one of the superstars that is going to be changing their style just to prolong their career in the wwe one of the things that we specifically discussed was how jeff hardy moveset is a little bit different nowadays because he's not necessarily doing it every single time and while in a recent interview jeff hardy mentioned that his lower back has been bothering him and that is the reason why he stopped doing swanton bombs at WWE live events. He indicated how it has been rough at times and his lower back has been bothering him to the point where he hasn't been doing the swanton bombs as much in live events just to protect himself. He added that not everything lasts forever but at least he got his face pain back and that naturally he will continue to do all those moves on television but when it comes to live event he is going to tone it down. Jeff Hardy in this interview pretty much confirm what we discussed before and if it is going to get him healthier then obviously it's a good thing moving on to some other news and backstage update on several wwe superstars returning from injury the wrestling observer newsletter reported that charlotte flair is expected to return to action in about three weeks after undergoing surgery just recently for her ruptured breast implants jason jordan should be returning once they figured out a storyline for his return he he was out of action after going under minor surgery for his neck so do keep in mind that jason jordan has been cleared to compete and he has been showing up backstage to monday night raw he is just waiting for wwe to have a storyline for him and put him on television and last but not least which we already discussed dean ambrose is supposed to return around the end of the summer what we heard so far from wrestlevote is that he will be back by september and he will be missing summerslam sticking with returns Ringside News is indicating that Randy Orton could be returning to action very soon as just yesterday he was spotted in Orlando, Florida which basically means that he could be at the WWE Performance Center to work off his ring rust after being out of action for undergoing surgery to repair his left knee. They added that normally injured WWE superstars that are in Orlando is so they can get back into wrestling shape 
at the WWE Performance Center. This is a strong indication that the Viper could be returning in the very near future. If this is the case, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Randy Orton return by SummerSlam, or at least the week after that event. Moving on to some other news, WrestleBoat stated that as of this Monday, Bobby Lashley vs. Roman Reigns is the scheduled main event for Extreme Rules. But they also added the following. There was, maybe still is, a push to have Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler Iron Man match in the main event spot, but that is unlikely. And very interestingly, they also added that almost no support for AJ Styles versus Rusev being the main event, which basically tell us that they're definitely not interested in that program, and that although it is happening, clearly it is just a filler to get AJ Styles to SummerSlam and to feud with another opponent, which is rumored to be Samoa Joe. Certainly sucks for Rusev Day, as this is another indication that we probably not going going to see Rusev captured the championship during this match. If you guys missed the early betting ads for the other matches, make sure to check out the previous roundup episode as I discuss how many title changes could be happening this Sunday and more of the latest. Moving on to some other reports and some very interesting one in regards to the women's division. WWE has been discussing the idea of having an all women's event that features main roster talent. Pro Wrestling She reports that the company has been pitching the idea of having the all women's show in late September or October. The idea stems from the fact that the women were not able to compete at the greatest Royal Rumble event which caused some backlash. The beliefs is that the event could put potentially make up for the payday that the women's division missed out on that show. Nothing is set in stone and it is unknown if the show could include NXT talent, indie talent or former WWE superstars. This is of course very interesting because we haven't seen it done in the WWE, at least when it comes to a pay-per-view. We do have the Mae Young Classic, but we really haven't had a full pay-per-view. In my opinion, if they end up doing this, obviously they need to include NXT, at least the NXT champion. But this could also be a great time for them to actually introduce a women's tag team championship if they are going to do it. And if you think about it, it will write the show itself because they're going to be having the NXT champion, the SmackDown champions, the Raw Women's champion, which is already three matches that they could work around it, and then another one for the tag team titles. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think if WWE does end up having this special event. And moving on to some other news and the latest in regards to Brock Lesnar. As according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, Brock Lesnar return match would take place at SummerSlam, but his opponent is not yet known. The original plan had a multi-man match at Extreme Rules, with the winner of that match becoming the number one contender. But that was obviously cancelled, and instead now we are getting Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley, but there's nothing on the line. But sticking with Brock Lesnar, what's even more worthy is the fact that he is scheduled to appear on the Monday Night Raw following SummerSlam. Slam, which is obviously on the same venue, so of course Brock Lesnar is going to be at SummerSlam, we just don't know who he's going to face, but the rumor is again that he's going to be facing either Roman Reigns or Bobby Lashley, or maybe both of them. In regards to what WWE is doing right now, according to Wrestling Inc, WWE is using Brock Lesnar's appearance at UFC 226 as a way of making him more of a heel and hoping the fan will finally cheer Roman Reigns. So they're trying to make Brock Brock Lesnar a mega heel in the hope that the fans will ultimately get behind Roman Reigns when he does defeat Brock Lesnar for the championship. One of the issues right now is of course that that hasn't worked as Roman Reigns even though being a babyface is still not getting the best babyface reaction. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Do you think that WWE's plans is actually working or is it not? And just to end this report, do keep in mind that Brock Lesnar has absolutely no control what's going on right now. Vince been man does. The reason why we don't see Brock Lesnar on WWE television is because that is Vince McMahon's decision. Vince McMahon is in control of when Brock Lesnar is going to defend the title. And yes, he is a part-timer, but if Vince McMahon wanted Brock Lesnar to show up next week on Raw, Brock Lesnar is going to be there. And the last report that I got for you guys is a quick one, but one that I'm actually excited about, as Ring of Honor announced that they will be holding a joint show with New Japan Pro Wrestling Co. G1 Supercar at Madison Square Garden during WrestleMania weekend on Saturday, April 6, 2019. This is obviously huge news because it's gonna be happening on Saturday, a day before WrestleMania, and it's going to be happening on 
the same day as NXT TakeOver. There was no specific time announced, but this is a clear indication that they just want to go head to head with WWE in some type of way. WrestleMania, as you guys know, next year will be from New York slash New Jersey, so it is clear competition. As of right now, we don't know if it's going to be taking place at the same time as NXT TakeOver, but hopefully it happens early on in the day leading into NXT, so the fans that want to go to both shows ultimately enjoy both of them and are able to make it to both. Nonetheless, you savages, that is what I got for you on this roundup episode. Don't forget this Sunday, we will be doing a watch party for Extreme Rules on the Twitch channel, so make sure to follow it. If you haven't by now, make sure to check out any of my other previous video and subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications to be fully up to date. I hope you'll drop that like button and let's try to go for 500 and plus likes. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to see how dig it.